grab an adult beverage, and let's talk about the very first Spider-Man comic. The very first Spider-Man comic was an 11-page story in Amazing Fantasy number 15, and the cover is just wonderful. Hey, uh, Spider-Man, think maybe you don't want to be shouting your name next to the guy you just captured? The comic begins with Peter Parker being laughed at and excluded by his fellow classmates. Poor Peter. But next page, we see that he has a loving Uncle Ben and Aunt May who both think the world of Peter. Peter does great in school and may even get a scholarship, but he's brushed off by the girl he likes, Sally, for... Now, the next panel. Peter is asking a group of students if they want to go to a new science exhibit with him. Is this sometime later? Is this the same batch of kids with different clothing? Is this some new group Peter's trying to hang out with? Is Peter stuck in some type of Cthulhu-like nightmare? And we too, by reading this comic, are now stuck in this hellish nightmare, forever destined to die agonizing deaths over and over again? I don't know. So Peter goes to the science exhibit on radioactivity all by himself, sobbing, saying that he will show them one day. This seems like the perfect setup for Peter to become a villain. Let's see. While in the exhibit, a spider that accidentally absorbed a fantastic amount of radioactivity. Now, now that word fantastic, not the word I would use to describe a spider slowly dying from absorbing too much radiation. So this spider, in shock, bites the nearest living thing in the split second before life ebbs from its radioactive body. And also manages to crawl away and bite one other person before it dies, but that's another story. Peter instantly feels strange and decides that he needs to go outside for air. And apparently everybody in this comic has a hard-on for Peter because even the old men are making fun of him. Peter goes outside and almost gets hit by a car, but he manages to jump out of the way. The people in the car's response? That's one egghead who won't daydream anymore when he crosses the street. You almost fucking kill a person, and that's your response? <laughs> but Peter finds out he can easily scale up the wall, and on top of the building crushes a steel pipe like it's nothing. Peter concludes that the spider must have given him powers, and he needs time to think about what to do with these new abilities. On his way home, he sees a contest. If you can stay in the ring for three minutes with Crusher Hogan, a wrestler, you win $100. He runs back home and decides to disguise himself. I really don't know why this would be how you would test your new powers, but I guess I'm not a teenage boy and I guess I'm not in the 60s, so I'm gonna let it slide. Masked, Peter goes to the ring and accepts the challenge. He discovers he has speed, agility, and the very strength of a gigantic spider. Eventually, after getting totally schooled by Peter, Crusher Hogan gives up and Peter wins $100. A TV producer called Ed Sullivan approaches Peter and says that he could make a fortune off his act. Afterwards at home, Peter designs a new costume that is thin enough to wear under his clothes decides on the name Spider-Man, and builds his web shooter with a little strong liquid cement at the end so he can hold himself up. On the Ed Sullivan Show, Spider-Man performs and the crowd is awestruck. It's a really weird origin story. While Peter is high on his new success, a thief runs by and Peter refuses to catch him. I wonder if this is going to have any ramifications. Surely not. When questioned by the police why he didn't try to trip the thief or hold him, Spider-Man replies, Sorry, pal. That's your job. I'm through being pushed around by anyone. From now on, I just look out for number one. That means me. Good. The hate is swelling in your mouth. Use it. You, you need to fucking stop. Stop. You can only tempt so many teenage boys. At home, Peter gets a microscope from his aunt and uncle and decides since they were the only people to ever be nice to him, he'd make sure they're happy, but the rest of the world can go hang. Yeah, kind of giving off some villain vibes there, Pete, not gonna lie. But who cares, because Peter becomes a superstar. Everybody loves him. He's even getting his own TV series. Until one day, he returns home to find a police officer talking to Aunt May. Uncle Ben has been shot and killed, but the police officer tells Peter not to worry. 
They have the suspect trapped in the old Acme warehouse at the waterfront. They're sure they'll get the guy. Peter excuses himself and changes into his Spider-Man costume, thinking that he's going to get Uncle Ben's murderer himself. Getting to the warehouse, Spider-Man attacks Uncle Ben's murderer and discovers, are you ready for this? The thief that Peter let get away was the man that murdered Uncle Ben. What a fucking twist. Peter realizes that he's a piece of shit, and if he would have stopped that guy, his uncle would still be alive. As he walks away, Peter realizes, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, Peter, if it makes you feel any better, this is only the first of many mistakes you're going to make over your career. Also clones. Lots of fucking clones. Join us every Thursday for a new comic book story. This could be a first issue of a superhero or any random issue I find funny or weird. You can check out last week's video where I talked about a traumatized little boy that grew up to beat on the elderly, the homeless, and those with mental disorders. Besides that, come back every Sunday and Wednesday for Game of Thrones videos, eventually Monday and Friday for Star Wars videos, Walking Dead reviews, Walking Dead comics versus show, as well as the comic book story time every Thursday. The very first- You gonna calm down? You gonna calm the fuck down? Is, is this about you? Is this about you? Calm down. Making a fool of yourself.